In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the list abstract data type. Um, in an earlier video, we looked at stacks and queues as abstract data types. And uh, in this particular instance, we're going to be uh, studying the list abstract data type. Uh, before doing that, let's remind ourselves what exactly is an abstract data type. We said that it was a set of things and uh, the operations that could be performed in relation to those things. So in the case of a list, the set of things is basically just a list of elements, as the name suggests, uh, which have a particular order to them. And the operations defined with relation to those things, um, there are quite a few of them. I list some of them right here. <clears throat> so there's adding an element to the list at the end of the list, adding an element to a particular position in the list, setting a particular position of the list to, to be one element, uh, removing a particular element, clearing the entire list, getting one one element or uh, getting the size of the list. Um, in terms of the implementations of an abstract data type, uh, the abstract data type of course says nothing about the implementation. Uh, it, it, it leaves that up to you. And in Java actually has two uh, different implementations for the list abstract data type. The first one is the linked list and this is actually implemented using the doubly linked list um, data data structure and the the second one is the array list and in this case of course we're using the array data structure um, so let's study the performance of each one of these implementations um, for for every single method that we've defined for the list um, we're going to be looking at the worst case scenario of every single operation here uh, and uh, we're not going to be concerned with any constants and whatnot. We're just going to uh, see how, how it evolves, how the number of steps that we're going to identify for every method in, in a particular implementation, how, does, how, does, how do those, number, those steps evolve or grow with, with, uh, with respect to the number of elements in the list. So, for example, the addition of an element to uh, the list, if it was implemented as a linked list, would be very simple. You would just take your element, add it here, and make sure that the pointers are uh, uh, adjusted accordingly. And in the case of a linked list, it would be independent events. So, no matter how many elements we have, if we're adding an element to the end of the list, it, it would really not matter. So, the, the end would not uh, affect the, the complexity of the operation uh, that is the addition. So in this case it would be a constant um, time complexity. Um, and similarly in an array, when you add an element to the end of it, it would be independent of the number of elements that we have in the list. So it would also be a constant time oper uh, operation. When we're trying to add an element to a particular position in the uh, the list, then the matter is changed slightly. In the case of the array, what we're going to have to do, of course, we're looking at the worst case scenario. So let's assume we're adding to the front, and this is actually the worst case scenario. That's where arrays are weak. If we're adding an element to the front, this particular position, then all your elements that were already in the array will have to be shifted to the right. So basically, this is an operation that grows with n. So the more elements you have, the more operations you have to make. The more shifting you're going to have to do. In the case of a linked list, we're going to assume also it's the worst case scenario. But the linked list is implemented as a doubly linked list. Don't remember, don't don't forget that. So we have pointers that go in both directions, previous and next. So what we're going to do is we're going to if if the element we're trying to add is in the is uh, in the first half, we're going to cycle from the beginning and find that element right here. Uh, if it's from the second half, then we're going to start from the end and find it right here. So it's actually dependent on n over 2. Or if you actually want to ignore constants, it's just going to be n. Um, we're going to continue that in the next video.